Hi everyone, and welcome to this presentation on salary negotiation. During today's conversation, we want to offer you tips and strategies for negotiating salary, learning when it's appropriate to negotiate, how to research salary averages for desired roles and industries, and how to respond to offers. But first, let's talk about career competencies. So career competencies are transferable and valued in every industry. A person's knowledge and behaviors that lead them to be successful in a job or throughout purposeful work. Careers and work environments change continually and individuals need to be able to adapt to these changes. Using competencies in a career promotes overall well-being, the ability to adapt to change, as well as gives individuals a sense of purpose. Employers around the world highly value and look for candidates who have competencies they desire in their organization. So in the 21st century, it is more important than ever for individuals to develop career competencies during their educational journey in order to ensure career success after graduation. The National Association of Colleges and Employers defines these essential skills in eight specific career competencies. These are the eight competencies that you see here. Today's conversation around salary negotiation will help you, help you develop and understand the career and self-development competency, as well as strengthen your ability to communicate. So let's go ahead and dive on into negotiation. So what is it? So let's um, explain the differences between persuasion and negotiation. So first, persuasion is convincing another party that you're correct and that they should do what you want. However, negotiation is not persuasion. Negotiation is a decision-making process by which two or more people agree on how to allocate scarce and interdependent resources. Negotiation involves the sharing of information, which means giving information to the other party in exchange for more information from them, getting information from the other party and giving them information in return, analyzing and using the available information to do better than you could have done alone. So why should you negotiate? So of course, there's going to be situations in which an employer may offer a lower salary than they actually have budgeted for because they expect you to negotiate. And then sometimes, however, employers don't necessarily have a large budget. Um, an example of that might be a small nonprofit or a startup. So it's important to consider what other things you're willing to negotiate on. Typically, you will be presented with a compensation package when it comes to the offer stage of the hiring process. So it's going to be important for you to reflect upon that compensation package in detail to determine what your non-negotiables may be. So this is just a list of some sample compensation benefits that you might be provided with when you receive an offer from an employer. So let's talk about how to prepare for some salary negotiation. So first, let's go ahead and watch this video. Um, where Tessa, excuse me, Teresa Torres, the VP of products at Actor College Media, will talk about how to neg uh, negotiate your salary for an entry level position. First of all, the offer it really starts long before then, even with your first cover letter or your resume, um, and all the way through the interview process. Your goal is to present yourself as exponentially better than the next person. And what that does is at the time that you're negotiating the offer, it allows you to talk about how you realize that this is the standard offer, that you've now presented yourself as anything but standard. Um, and then some companies do limit, maybe they have a strict, strict pay scale, and they're not going to be able to move very much on salary. That's fine. That tends to happen. But your compensation is much broader than that. It can include things like a relocation bonus or um, health benefits, vacation, um, telecommute privileges. And so the key is to look at which of those elements are really important to you and make sure that's part of your total um, package as you negotiate. So even if you're talking to a company where they have really strict guidelines on what entry-level salaries are, you can 
maybe you, you really value vacation and you want additional time off, you can ask for that. And that effectively is an increase in pay because it's an increase in paid time off. So it's important to look at all of those variables and not just focus on base salary. So when we are thinking about how to prepare for a salary negotiation, it's important that you know yourself and what you bring to the table. So start taking the time to reflect on what makes you unique. What are your, your unique competencies? So your resume should highlight your experiences and skills, and you should start thinking about how these skills are gonna be of benefit to the employer. Also, start challenging yourself to think about what your fundamental values and interests may be. Do you appreciate a steady salary, rewarding work, benefits, travel, vacation, as well as other things? What is important to you and what do you need in a job to be satisfied? It's also going to be important that you know the job. So before you go into a salary negotiation conversation, you should have a good understanding of what that job is going to require of you. Be prepared to say how you fit the job's desired qualifications. So be ready to discuss your knowledge, skills, and resources, any relevant experiences you have, why you're interested in the company and the job, and how your unique competencies qualify you for the job. At this time, I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video so that you can participate in this activity. This activity is designed to help you understand what your target salaries might be and allow you to do a little bit of research to see what the salary uh, typically is for the positions you're interested in. So go ahead and research salaries on sites like indeed.com, salary.com, glassdoor.com, or payscale.com. Articulate what your target salary is, what the range you might be looking for would be, and what minimum salary you're willing to accept. And then know your value. Create a value statement that you can share with the employers during the interview and negotiation process. So go ahead and pause the video and complete this worksheet. All right, so let's talk about how to respond. So if the employer asks you about salary negotiations on the application, when possible, list negotiable or list your target salary based on your research. During the interview, if the employer asks you about negotiation, excuse me, salary negotiation, be optimistic but realistic. Avoid giving ranges. Be careful if you have no idea of their range, but you should. So really, you should go into your salary negotiation conversation having done a bit of research about what typical salaries may run in this type of role. You could say something to the effect of, I'm really interested in this position, but I'd like to learn a bit more before discussing salary. After the interview, if an employer asks you about salary, you can state something to the effect of, I'm very interested and would certainly be glad to, be glad to respond to a specific offer. So what happens if the offer you received is lower than expected? So step one, show that you've done your research. Again, this is gonna be a key component to the salary negotiation process. Saying something along the lines of, thank you for the offer. I'm very interested in the role and your organization, and I feel as though I could be an asset. I've been researching typical salaries for someone with my skills and experience, and was hoping for something a bit closer to X, Y, Z. In addition, it's not gonna be enough to just ask for a higher salary. You need to prove it. You need to prove your case, support your case, and you need to convey why, why you deserve a higher salary. So add evidence. So something to the effect of, there are a number of strengths I can bring to the organization, including a strong work ethic and leadership skills, which I've honed through being active in multiple organizations. I also believe that these skills combined with my proven ability to lead teams will make me a strong employee. Saying something like this adds a little bit of validity to who you are as a candidate and gives them a little bit more to think about when it comes to potentially raising the salary offer. So what if this doesn't work? What if your attempt at asking for more um, 
salary does not work or what if the employer does not have the capacity to offer more salary. And it is important to note that this does happen. There are certainly organizations, like we mentioned earlier, where salary may not be something that they can budge on depending on what their budget may be. So if this happens, if you find yourself in this situation, consider asking when they conduct performance reviews. If it's after one year, ask if they would consider a six or nine month review to evaluate your performance and reconsider salary. Assess if there are other parts of the compensation package you would be willing to negotiate on and inquire further. So again, things like vacation time, um, you know, potentially providing a, a, a cell phone, um, travel benefits, what are some other things that are important to you and see if there are opportunities to negotiate some of that. At the end of the day, if it does not work, if you are not able to get that targeted salary, you do need to decide if you're willing to accept the offer they have presented. So let's talk about offers. So accepting an offer. So do not continue to interview or pursue other offers if you've already accepted an offer from an employer. If you need more time, go ahead and negotiate more time to decide. This, um, by, by uh, continuing to interview or pursuing other offers, this can reflect poorly on you as a candidate. And in fact, the Career Center does take re, um, rescinding an offer resending on a job offer pretty seriously. So that is something that you really want to be mindful of and think through before you're willing to accept an offer from an employer. So how much time do you have to respond? So ideally, employers are going to give you a deadline to decide, typically one to two weeks. If not, if that deadline is not clear, you should inquire and request more time if needed. So you could say something along the lines of, thank you for the offer. I am definitely interested, but need a bit more time to consider it. Would it be possible to get back to you by XYZ date? If you have one offer, but you're waiting on another, it is okay to approach your top choice and let them know you have another offer. Ask if they can provide more information on their timing. So when you're in the job search, things like this can get a little bit tricky. Um, ideally, you're applying to lots of different job opportunities, which could mean you're presented with multiple interviews as well as multiple um, uh, offers at a given point. And so it's going to be important for you to really manage the timing well and to be transparent and open with the employers that you're working with. So here are some final thoughts on salary negotiation. Prepare and be confident when negotiating. Appear committed and sincere. Ask for what you want. If you don't ask, you can't get it. Do your research. Try not to fixate on salary. Consider other negotiable elements to the offer. Don't ask for it all. Be willing to accept that you may not get everything you desire at this point, and that is okay. At the end of the day, keep the relationship in mind. And so this is the relationship with your potential employer, your potential supervisor and colleagues. And so keep the relationship and the ability to start off on the right foot in mind when it comes to negotiation. And if there's something that you did not get from this session that you would like us to discuss in the future, please do not hesitate to let the Career Center know. We wanna make sure that you all feel confident and prepared when it comes to these various career development topics. All right, and here is where we are located. We are directly to the right of the library. If you'd like to continue your conversation on salary negotiation, there's a couple ways that you can do that. So you can participate in drop-ins, which are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you can come by and just let the staff know that you wanna to talk to someone about salary negotiation and we can have that conversation with you. You can also make an appointment with a career coach and hire a niner and we will be happy to have this conversation with you to dive a little bit deeper into salary negotiation as well. Also, we do offer career meetups throughout the academic year and several times um, a semester, we will have salary negotiation meetups. So feel free to attend those sessions to also learn a little bit more about how to negotiate your salary. All right, well, I hope this presentation has been helpful for you and we hope to see you in the Career Center very soon.